Maybe, because what Mike Dom did yesterday, coming off the bench, 24 minutes, have a game, 7 of 12, 5 of 9 from 3, hit all his free throws, 7 boards. He was kind of playing that Nimi role of, hey, look, I'm probably more a 4, maybe I'm a 5, but uh, Kata being out, um, they slid him in, and he, he started to do some things yesterday, Jay. Yeah, no, he looked really good, um, and we talk about the same way. We're, I'm going to speak about him in kind of the same way I'm speaking about Jordan Ford when you look at, okay, summer league guys that stand out usually get a camp invite. Mm -hmm. And so Mike Dom might be a guy that gets a camp invite. And we said it about Jordan Ford, but what makes Jordan Ford, you know, good for the Kings potentially is I think his game fits with what they do. Mike Dom is a stretch guy that can rebound is something that the Kings love. And so I'm not over here advocating for Mike Dom to make the roster or that he has a chance to make the roster or even get that two-way deal. But it is something you do have to look at, and it's like Monty is bringing in guys that, whether they could potentially be on the roster or not, I don't know, but it's going to fit with like what the overall game plan of like, yeah. what the Kings are trying to do, right? Yeah. If I'm a, if, you know, these guys are young, and if I have agents or whatever, like, like I would try to scout the Kings as best as I could, and I said, look, my lane to make this team is to make threes. Like, if you can make yes. threes, look, they want you to defend. They want you to be position versatile. But we're talking about guys that are deeper on the bench here. And if you're being added because, look, in a pinch, that guy can hit an open three with Sabonis and Fox, that's what I would do. I would try to convince them that I could do that consistently and then show it when I get given the chance. Yeah, no, and that's just what he's trying to do there. Um, and so, again, this is a guy. He played a while. He's played in mm -hmm. uh, Liga ACB, Serie A. Like, he's been overseas and we said it. This is the dream, right? Right. Overseas, you can you can play basketball professionally overseas for years. You can make money. But everybody still has that NBA dream. And will Mike Dom get his NBA dream realized? I don't know. But, again, it's just one of those fun stories to follow. Yeah, I think you'll hear it here. This is his post game yesterday. So he has a, a breakout game. But you, you're going to hear a guy that, one, has great perspective, is still has the goal of chasing the dream, has worked hard, has heard what his knocks are, and has worked on him and uh, is really appreciative for just being here. So let's uh, hear a little post-game reaction from, from Mike Dom yesterday. Uh, these, what do you make of just these last two experiences, last two games for you? Um, kind of in, some individual success there, obviously. Yeah, uh, really, really amazing. Obviously, first off, it's super tough because I don't want to lose games. I hate losing. It's kind of just puts a damper on my – on, on everything uh, that goes on. But obviously for me, it's it's been a very, very good experience. Uh, my last summer league was four years ago, uh, but everything going on here with the Kings is is one of a kind. It's it's really, really fun. And then uh, I'm just really happy to be a part of it. Having that experience, is it slowed down a little bit or is it just as fast? No, it definitely has slowed down. Um, I feel like I bring um, a lot of experience playing overseas those four years um, that some of these guys, they just like, it's a different pace. It really is a different pace, and and I feel like I come to an advantage being able to come back here in the states and play a little bit. It, I see the game a little slower, and it, it helps me out. Coach was talking about you know maybe you're a little bit more naturally of a four, but they've been asking you to play as a five. Like, what's the difference in your mind between those two spots for you? Yeah, for me, it's not a, a tough transition because I played the five throughout high school, throughout college, um, and then I kind of transitioned to. You know, having to lose a little bit of weight, having to be able to guard quicker guys. Um, I just think the huge difference, you know, between the four and the five, and obviously the way the NBA is moving is is everything is getting super athletic. They want guys who can move quick, things like that. So I feel like I'm a good transition in between. But for me, it's just great that, you know, coaches are asking me to do anything. I'm trying to help the team win as much as I can. Do you have some family here? I do. My uh, my, my fiance, her mom, and then my mom and her aunt, they're all or, uh, my aunt are all out here. Uh, it's really, really cool to see the support, you know, kind of from all over the nation for my family uh, to be able to come out and make a little bit of noise. Yeah, so how cool was that today to just kind of find that rhythm and, and knock down some big shots? It's really cool. Obviously, being able to do it in front of my family means, you know, the most to me. They've, they've supported me so much, and uh, my fiancé especially letting me go overseas for 10 months and not seeing me, you know, for that long a period of time. Is a huge shout-out to her, but uh, my family's amazing. What's her name? Uh, Taylor August. Okay. Now nah, she's the stud. She she played she played volleyball, professional volleyball. So she's really the athletic one in the family. What would it mean to, to have an opportunity beyond beyond summer league, be it with Sacramento or even just another franchise in the NBA? I mean, it would it would mean a lot to me. Obviously, my goal 
ever since I started playing when I was a young kid was to, to make an NBA roster. So for me to just keep working hard, obviously opportunities come and go. You just got to be ready to take them. And, and for me, I'm in a great situation. Be able to play basketball for a living is a blessing. So I can't complain about anything that happens. What role are you trying to prove that, that you could fill at that level? Uh, I think the biggest thing for me to work on um, – well, and it has been since college is my defense. And I think that's the, the biggest thing that I've also made strides on is I think I was labeled as very slow out of college. And now they see me and they see, OK, this kid's quicker, more athletic. He can move better. And obviously, one, I just want to be a super, super uh, diverse player. I want to be able to guard the one through five. I want to be able to give the mismatch options on offense and just find ways for you know my teammates to, to make the right plays, me to make the right plays and, and hopefully just fill one of those roles. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you, sir. Good night. Right. Appreciate Thank it. Thanks, guys. All right. Different perspective there from Mike Dom. Uh, truly appreciative of the opportunity, Jay. Um, again, I think he he's heard that, look, you're um, maybe not quick enough on the perimeter, maybe not the right side. And he's transformed his body. Like, he's just worked at it. And he's been a pro and just trying to see if he can crack the code and get into an NBA roster. Yeah, it's going to be rough. It Obviously, be. And could you see there? And, you know, it's funny. It's like he's pointing out like what he does well and versus his issues. I'm like, okay, stretches the floor. Kings love that rebound. Mm -hmm. That works. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't play a whole lot of defense. I'm like, oh, he's he's uh, he's perfect for the Sacramento he's Kings. King. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you cracked the code. Score yeah. the ball. You don't have to play much defense. You get That's a few right. boards, dude. Welcome there you to go. The team. Welcome in. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the reality now is, like we said earlier, there is one two-way spot. There are two roster spots. I, I don't know that we're looking at, barring something that I just don't see, someone that's going to make a true substantial difference for the 23-24 Kings. But that doesn't mean, you know, if you get on the roster, you're on the roster. Right. And the way the years go, 82 games, even if it looks like, man, I'm buried on this bench, opportunities come when you just don't expect it. So the true cliche, you have to stay ready. If you're on the roster, that's all that matters for these guys. That's all they want to do is, is get that NBA paycheck and be involved and see if they can, uh, you know, continue to work their way up. Yeah, no, Mike Dom knows he's not going to be in the MVP race next year if he makes it <laughs> right. onto an NBA roster. Yeah. But what Mike Dom also knows is that he brings a skill set that we talked to. It's Again, I, we're going to keep making the same comparison we made with Jordan Ford. If you're on an NBA team, and like I said, he can rebound. He can shoot from the outside. You can utilize a guy like that in practice, you know, that is going to yep. keep you on your toes. Iron sharpens iron. And if you have guys on your roster that do things that other NBA players do well and you're practicing against that every day, those are the type of guys that stick around, Jason, and have careers, you know, at the end of a bench for five, six, seven seasons. And you make a nice living doing that. Yeah. Rooting for guys like that. Again, it's not, they're not all going to make it. They're not all happy uh, stories at the end, but that doesn't mean the grind doesn't continue for all of these guys. So appreciate what they're doing. Kings off today, as we said. Last night, baseball had its all-star game. The National League did something they haven't done since 2012 as they finally prevail. We've got some highlights and recaps from uh, another entertaining day in Seattle. Baseball was good to Seattle. Seattle was good to baseball. We've got that next here on Sacktown Sports.